Conservative. Constitutional. It's the Andrew Cooper Writer Show, keeping you informed on what's going on right here in Kentucky. And welcome everybody to another amazing day here on the Andrew Cooper Writer Show, your source for Kentucky politics from a constitutional and conservative viewpoint. Everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday, and I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday in front of you. Now, people who've been listening to the show uh, obviously know about this Friday at 10 a.m., that red flag gun law hearing in the Joint uh, Judiciary Committee uh, in Frankfurt, up there in the Capitol Annex. At 10 a.m., I hope you will join me. I will be there. I know tons of others will be there as well. I also, too, uh, before we dig into it and, and kind of wrap back around there, I do want to encourage everybody to make sure you're reaching out to the show. There's a few items today I'll be talking about or a few points I will mention that were simply sent to me by people who listen here to the Andrew Cooper Writer Show and uh, wanted to hear some takes on it, wanted to hear that plugged in. And obviously, if you have questions or comments, concerns, or compliments even, I'll take those too. You can reach out to the show by emailing info at theandrewshow.com. Once again, that is info at theandrewshow.com. So we've got this big hearing coming up on Friday. I know you'll be there, right? Of course you will. I know I will be there. I know many people will be there, but anytime you see conservatives coming together around something, anytime you see community coming together to push back against something, you will have those detractors, those people who professionally, all they do is literally complain. Yes, I do a show every day where I'm talking about issues and sometimes people could say that I'm complaining, but what sets me apart. What makes me different, I think, is the fact that I do have actions that we do, like showing up to the hearings and anything else. So those who 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 don't want us to do that or think it's silly or stupid because maybe they didn't feel like showing up and they feel uh, bad about that. So they want anybody else who'd show up to the meeting to feel bad. Well, they'll, they'll have some comments. For us, you know, one of the comments I've heard from some people is that Andrew, this bill's DOA dead on arrival. You all don't have to worry about this bill. I mean, look at all these legislators right now coming out to say that they would never support the bill. And you know what's funny about that? Before we started talking about this heavily, uh, not just on this show, but you know, there's there are people all across the state. Uh, who have a voice in the conservative side of things, uh, party chairs that are conservative, other uh, podcasters that are conservative. I'd say other radio show hosts that are conservative and push this out there, though I don't think uh, there's another radio station where they've really pushed this out there. Maybe I'm mistaken. If you heard about it on some other radio station, let me know. But I think the WZXI listeners are quickly becoming the most informed listeners in the state on Kentucky politics, but that's besides the point. Um, but, you know, there's other uh, conservatives out there, even some conservatives reps that have pushed it out there, uh, conservative thinkers that that they've talked about this, they've mentioned this, they know about this, they're encouraging people to show up to as well. So it's not just here, it's a bunch of groups of people doing this. And But before all of us started pushing this out there, well... The, the condemnation from this on this was non-existent from legislators, uh, basically non-existent. There was a few, Representative Maddox and, and, and Dones and Rawlings and, and Proctor and as such that would speak out against this, but there wasn't very many. I mean, remember on this show, we covered Amanda Mays Bledsoe, Senator, out of, uh, well, she lives in Fayette County, but she kind of wraps up there and uh, into, you know, like um, Boyle and, and Mercer and stuff. And uh, uh, as well as Representative Dietz from Northern Kentucky, both Republicans, they were on Kentucky Tonight talking and asked about this very bill. And did they come out and say, look, this is dead on arrival. There's no chance this happens. Whitney Westfield isn't a conservative for putting this forward. Uh, you know, this is something that will never pass. I'm not interested in hearing it. I know I'll be voting. No, no. Instead, they say, look, when it comes to red flag laws, we're worried about, of course, due process. And if this addresses due process, well, maybe we'll be okay with it. Maybe we'll go ahead and push it forward. Remember, that's what they said. 
But now the tunes change. This is DOA. Nobody's voting for this, right? Because they know that a wave of patriots like you, like me, are coming up to Frankfurt Friday because of this bill, and they're trying to get ahead of it. They're trying to not be crushed by the quote-unquote wave of liberty coming up to Frankfurt on Friday. Because you know what? If we didn't show up, and if we stop showing up, and if we stop pushing this the, on this issue, things like this would pass. I mean, do you really think these people have any kind of real convictions? I mean, as I stated Monday, Whitney Westerfield still sits as chair of this committee. He forwards something. All these conservatives supposedly say it's down a rival. Nobody likes it. It's not conservative. We hate the fact he proposed this bill because we have all these people now, uh, you know, we're having to deal with constituents' concerns, but yet there's not a call that he be removed as committee chair. Whereas any single legislator made a proposal demanding he be removed. I haven't heard of one yet publicly. I mean, how many of you have talked to your legislators? How many of you have called them up, talked to them in person or anything else? And for those of you who don't, you just trust me on this. When you do go to talk to them, you'll hear things like if you want bills passed or you want to know why the legislature is doing something, they'll say, well, you know, some people want it or, well, some people in leadership are against it or others in leadership want this done. Or they'll say, well, some legislators in the Republican caucus have a problem with this or that but they'll never tell you who they are. You know, it's this phantom menace out there, this phantom legislators that exist, and, and, and they won't tell you who their names are. Because if they had the courage of convictions, they would, well, say those names. But guess what? They don't. Because they don't really want you to know. That's a big part of the reason why. It could be because they don't want to be the guy to rat out their buddies the constituents, because then maybe, uh, you know, they're not as good friends as they used to be, or they won't help them out as much on this or that. And so they're worried about that. They're worried about fitting in with their colleagues, or perhaps it's because they themselves are the people who don't want it. And it's easy to blame some unknown phantom out there. Perhaps that's why. Now, there are a few people who've commented on our actions here and trying to take this as an opportunity to push their own personal agenda of getting people to hate the Republican party and leave it. And I understand why these people initially feel this way. I at one point was also politically naive and uninformed. I wasn't woken up to the way people were. I mean, I was a registered Republican from the moment I turned 18. I've been a Republican ever since, other than a few months in 2020, where I was fed up with the weak Republican leadership, as I'm sure many of you were. And I thought, well, maybe a new party is the answer. Maybe we need something different. Maybe that's the answer. And you hear that all the time. People saying, we need a new party. Get rid of the Republican Party. Why are you a part of it? And then I realized something because I grew up and matured. I realized that parties are just made up of people. And what actually defines what a party is, is its platform. Do you agree with the platform or do you don't? That's the only requirement. And if you agree with the platform, and I agree with the Republican Party platform, then it's upon you, the members of the party, to hold people accountable to that platform. You can go create a new party all you want to, and you can cook up your own platform and, and literally carbon copy the Republican Party's platform. But what would happen the moment people deviate from that platform. What would you do? Well, you would have to hold them accountable. You already have a platform you agree with if you're a conservative in the Republican Party. Now it's time to hold people to that platform. If you agree with it, hold them accountable to it. And I know we've talked about Mac Brown these last two days, outgoing Kentucky GOP chair, and how he doesn't really represent the views of most Kentucky Republicans and how that means he needs to be held accountable. And we'll kind of dis continue this discussion, the discussion on, on the chairs and candidates not following the Republican Party platform. What do we do? Um, and, and kind of discussing this hearing too as well, because there's some other things at this hearing that will be discussed, including the Safer Kentucky Act. We'll, 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 we'll talk about all that. After this short break, you're listening to The Andrew Cooperator Show, your source for Kentucky politics. 
Listen up, my fellow business owners. You need to get your cybersecurity and IT support under control. Reach out to the folks at Amston today. Call 859-300-0087 or visit amston.com. It is no secret that cyber attacks have become a constant threat, and you need to make sure that your organization is protected. Amston has over 30 years of experience working with businesses and governments alike. Call 859-300-0087 or visit Amston, A-M-P-S-T-U-N dot com today. And you are back with the Andrew Cooperwriter Show. As always, if you want to reach out to the show, go ahead and email info at theandrewshow.com. Once again, info at theandrewshow.com. Before the break, we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, this this hearing going on that we're going to be going to and some of the naysayers, some of the poo-pooers saying like, look, you know, I thought these were all Republicans. Why, why are you so worried about Republicans and missing the fact because they're immature that just because somebody says they're a Republican, it's upon the rest of the party to hold people accountable. You know, in the last two days, well, Monday, Friday, you know, uh, we, we were talking about Mac Brown and how he, um, outgoing chair Republican party had given a few different, uh, interviews where he was saying things that stand against the Republican party. And, you know, the Republican party just recently passed a, uh, uh, resolution saying that they, they are committed to protecting pro-life principles into the 2024 session. Something that of course, Mac Brown ignores when he calls for the murder of babies, because he thinks that's what's necessary for electoral victory. But though Mac Brown is the outgoing Kentucky GOP chair, he isn't the Republican Party. He may have been chair, but he is still a man, and it's up to us to make sure he's held accountable. And the same thing of our representatives. Uh, any constitutional officer, any representative that runs for office here in Kentucky has to fill out this form when they run for office. This is what it says. It says, for the purpose of having my name placed, so they have to fill this out with the secretary of state or their, their local office, uh, local county clerks or what have you in order to get what's called ballot access, have their names printed on the ballot in order to run in the primary for a Republican or Democrat party. And this is what it says for the purpose of having my name placed on the official primary election ballot as a candidate for nomination by the it's a blank party. So I'm going to fill this in for you. Republican party. I, um, you know, John Doe, do solemnly swear that my residence is, give your address, that my mailing address, if different, is, give your mailing address, that I am a registered uh, Republican voter in the, and then you put down your precinct, that I believe in the principles of the Republican Party and intend to support its principles and policies, that I meet all the statutory and constitutional qualifications for the office which I am seeking that if nominated as a candidate of such party at the ensuing election, I will accept the nomination and not withdraw other than reason stating KRS 118.1053 that I will not knowingly violate any election law or law relating to corrupt and fraudulent practices in campaigns or elections in the state. And if finally elected, I will qualify for the office. So it says right there, I believe you have to sign a statement <coughs> signed and notarized that says you support the principles and policies of the Republican party. When you become a Republican candidate in this state and two other Republicans have to swear that you'll do that as well. And so they've already stated they supposedly support the policies. Now we just have to hold them accountable to it. Now, that's not the only thing being discussed in the hearing Friday. And I, like I said, I hope you join me Friday. I hope you put it on your calendar to be there. I know I will be, uh, uh, like I said, there as well. But they'll also be discussing this Safer Kentucky's Act. Safer Kentucky Act. And uh, to give you an idea here of kind of some of the things in it. Now, it's funny. There's there's a part of this that's about wiretapping. Um, so part of the Safer Kentucky Act, it had a long list of 18 points, and one of those was to allow wiretapping. Now, this, of course, has caused quite an uproar, quite an upset 
from people like me and others, because of course we've, we've fallen this before with the Patriot Act, <laughs> uh, where the, you know, government was given expanded abilities to spy on U S citizens and it didn't go well. And so, you know, obviously it makes us uncomfortable, makes us nervous. So instead, uh, they're going to put this wiretapping law into its own bill. They say, and it's funny too, when it comes to like this red flag gun law or these other laws, people all the time will be like, well, we don't know exactly what's in it. So, you know, you're making claims because I made a post where I said, also, there will be a bill that had wiretapping in it uh, being discussed. Well, they removed the wiretapping part recently. And of course the claim is, well, you don't know what the bill really said. Well, you know, part of the reason we don't know exactly what the bills say is because frankly, they don't release what the bills will be before we look at them. That's a new thing this year. We don't know what the bills exactly say. They're right, but we know what they've said in public and topic and talked about it. That's how we know what's in the red flag law car bill. And how we know it's in the Safer Kentucky's Act is because they released a massive press release, all these Louisville uh, 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 representatives to all these media places. So this is from WDRB. They're giving us these 18 points. Here you go targeting violent, persistent felony offenders, a three strikes law, enhancing the penalty for fentanyl delivery, causing overdose death, um, promoting contraband in detention facilities. That'll be met with harsher punishments. They want to establish a uh, Kentucky state police post in Jefferson County in Louisville. They want regulating bail funding organizations. I want to call this Madeline's Law. So for those of you unaware, um, there's these groups out there that will, uh, uh, they're like crowdfunding groups that raise money for bails. Um, and then they bail out people who commit crimes. Uh, and, and, and of course, you know, the process of bail is supposed to be, it's to ensure you return back for your trial that you're not just going to be able to run away. But when somebody else is paying your bail, that kind of takes that away. So, so that's getting regulated. Uh, they want that regulated to, so that way, you know, if you have a hundred thousand dollar bail, uh, because you know, you're, you're, you're relatively don't have means and you murder somebody and you get a hundred thousand dollar bail, they can't, uh, a crowd fund <coughs> that bail for you. And then you can make your escape without having to worry about paying for those consequences yourself. They want, they want to strengthen shopkeeper privileges. This is, this is good stuff. You know, allows employees and business owners to use a reasonable amount of force necessary to protect themselves, to prohibit the escape of a person detained, or to prevent the loss of goods for sale. Provide civil and criminal immunity for workers and business owners. That's great. Uh, increase penalties for attempted murder. That sounds good. Requiring parents to attend juvenile court hearings. Hey, uh, get the parents involved, right? Reentry for those leaving incarceration, creating a Kentucky statute for carjacking. Apparently there's not a current statute for carjacking, a separate statute. Increasing penalties for vandalism of public or private property. Mandatory sentencing for guns used in crimes that were possessed in violation of state law, involuntary confinement for the mentally ill. So they want to allow the mentally ill to be uh, uh, more easily involuntary confined, allow law enforcement to use wiretapping when appropriate. Like I said, that's from their original press release. They say that's not in there, but you know, don't know. Auction of confiscated guns. This allows, this is interesting. So right now they auction off guns to like licensed dealers, right? But now this would allow unlicensed ordinary citizens to bid on confiscated murder weapons with provision that the guns be destroyed by KSP rather than transferred to the buyer. So it allows people to buy a gun, um, which, you know, these gun sales going to fund to help fund KSP's actions. And so rather than, um, you know, giving the, the, the gun to whoever buys it, KSP can decide, can, if asked to, can just uh, destroy them. Uh, prevent street camping. You know, obviously homelessness is a big issue, though it's street camping, a big, big problem. And death penalty for the murder of a law enforcement officer and reforming the parole board. So there's a lot there. There's like a lot in this plan. And this will be in that same hearing. But I got to be honest with you. Uh, while some of this is great, some of this I really agree with, some of it obviously I'm I'm a little more hesitant to agree with. Um, I don't think this is necessarily 
our problem per se. I don't think we have a, we need to pass more laws problem. I think we have a lawlessness problem being promoted by activist judges. We have, we have examples and situations going on in Lexington. I'll cover that here after this upcoming break. I've got about two minutes till the break. So I'll go into that after that. But you know, these legislators, if they want to do something, if they actually want to do something, it's not create more laws because the issue before us, as I'm going to cover, isn't necessarily that we need more laws. It's that judges are not enforcing the laws in front of them. Prosecutors aren't prosecuting. Judges aren't uh, handing down, you know, uh, uh, prosecutions. They're, they're in, in Lexington, we have an issue with dismissing charges. We'll cover that. I mean, that's, that's the issue here. You want to talk about lawlessness? It's because we don't have police officers. Because if you catch somebody, you're going to catch them again in the next few days. You're going to catch them again in the next few days. And you feel like you're accomplishing anything. You're not accomplishing anything. So you run out of police. So you can't enforce the laws you pass anyways. And then on top of that, you have these activist judges. I'll give you some examples of those, as I said. That makes it hard to enforce the laws. So I understand the legislature saying, we need to do something. Let's pass some laws. But how about you start actually using the power of your legislature in another way? I mean, they, they refuse to use the power of the legislature to remove judges that are doing some absolutely egregious and awful things, allowing murderers to walk amongst us and attempted murderers to walk amongst us because they feel like it. And if you think I'm making that up, man, do I have a story to tell you about something that just happened in Lexington, but to get that story, you're going to have to join us after this next commercial ad break. Now, if you want to reach out to the show, as always, you can email info at the Andrew show.com. Once again, that's info at the Andrew show.com. You're listening to the Andrew Cooper Editor show your source for Kentucky politics from constitutional and conservative perspective. We'll see you all back here in just a few, few short minutes. Lexington Overstock Warehouse is Central Kentucky's best source for stylish new home furnishings. Don't pay retail. With our low overhead operating structure and big name brands, we offer the absolute best values on new furniture for every room. Shop online anytime at LexingtonOverstockWarehouse.com or visit our weekends only showroom located at 156 West Tiverton Way. Right now, for listeners of this show, we're offering a special discount for our online customers. Use coupon code FREEDOM for an additional 10% off your online order today. Lexington Overstock Warehouse, low overhead equals really low prices. And you are back with the Andrew Cooperator Show. For the break, we're talking about the Safer Kentucky Act. The legislature's trying to pass new laws in order to enhance, increase criminal violations, in order to uh, create new laws to make sure we, we increase the opportunity for people to get convicted when they do break a crime. But my point is that I don't think new laws is going to fix this. Now, some of you may remember a few, uh, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I covered the story, the case of Lucille White, a woman out of Lexington. For those of you who don't remember, let me remind you what Lucille White did. Lucille White um, attempted to stab a man with a kitchen knife and then run him over with her car. She then crashed her car into uh, the apartment house that they are living in. Police firefighters show up. She attempts to flee the scene. In doing so, she <clears throat> hits a police cruiser, nearly runs over several first responders. She's posing such a threat that a police officer shoots her, strikes her, doesn't kill her, but strikes her. That shooting was ruled justified. She then leads police on an hour and a half police chase across multiple counties. And what did Lucille White get? Well, Lucille White claimed she was just simply having a mental health breakdown. Now, a person would normally say, okay, even if that's the case, you're just having a mental health breakdown. You're clearly a danger to yourself and others, at least others, right? That's what we're worried about. I mean, you try to murder a guy. You, you try to run over police and firefighters. You let them on an hour and a half police chase. Apparently, if that's just a mental health break, well, whatever you want to blame it on, you're unsafe to be on the streets. We need to get you off the streets. That would have been 
the response. But instead, the judge in this case sentenced Lucille White not to a few years in a mental institution, if it was a mental breakdown, not a at least a year or two in jail. No, instead, Lucille White got five years probation and a $4,500 fine. $4,500, bucks, 5 years probation for trying to murder a man with a kitchen knife, run him over with her car, run over police and firefighters, crash into cruisers, lead police on an hour and a half police chase, get legally shot by the cops because she was such a threat. Five years probation, $4,500 fine. You say, Andrew, that's a one-off case. You're just trying to use that example as to, you know, one time judges didn't enforce the law. Well, there we have a non-enforcement due to a mental health break. But now we have the case of Cornell Denmark Thomas II. And what did Cornell Thomas do? Well, in 2020, at a very high rate of speed, he ran a red light and T-boned a woman. This was in the morning, so the woman was on her way to work. He T-bones her, and it causes her car to catch fire. Instead of cop stopping, calling 911, uh, uh, trying to render aid, trying to help the woman he just hugely ran into, he ran away like the piece of trash he is. And the woman he wrecked into died. He murdered somebody. He murdered somebody. He ran a red light driving uh, uh, ludicrously fast. T-boned her car so hard she caught her car caught fired, then left her to die. And what did Cornell Denmark Thomas II get? Well, Judge Julie Goodman here in Lexington just dismissed all the charges. Her stated reason was because he was black. No, I'm 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 not kidding. She she is is literally said that the prosecutor's office, they're too harsh with black people. And so Cornell Thomas gets to get away with murdering someone's mother and roam the streets free with no punishment whatsoever because it was dismissed due to racial disparities. Because she thinks the prosecutor's office is, is going after minorities too hard. Do you know what the whole laughable thing about the prosecutor's office is in Lexington is? You know what's laughable here? Is that the Commonwealth attorney, the, the state's prosecutor in Faye County is Kimberly Bird. She is a black woman. And the county attorney, the county prosecutor is Angela Evans. Guess what she is? A black female. So a judge dismissed murder charges based upon a man's skin color because she says that the black female prosecutor's offices are being too harsh to black people. And then we wonder why our streets are so unsafe. We wonder why crime is so high. We wonder why we have police officer shortages. We wonder why people don't feel safe. You don't need a safer Kentucky Act, legislators. You need to get out the impeachment pen and start calling for some impeachments of these judges. Because it doesn't matter what laws you pass, legislators, if they're not enforced. If you've got the right skin hue or claim you're having a mental breakdown so you can get away with violent crimes like murder and wanton endangerment and police chases simply because of your skin color or your claimed mental condition and you're allowed to roam the streets free, no amount of laws passed will make the difference, the legislators need to send a clear message. If you don't enforce the laws we pass, you're out of here, buster. Because they can do it. The legislative branch in this state, it's not co-equal. They are the most powerful branch in our government. Why? Because they're made up of 138 people versus just a few. And the legislative body can impeach any person other than another legislator 
in the state of Kentucky. They can impeach a sheriff, a judge. They can impeach a governor. They can impeach anybody other than another member of their body. That's the only person who can't be removed from office through impeachment. That's it. But otherwise, they can remove these judges in a heartbeat. If they actually want to say, we're serious about crime, we're serious about actually getting something accomplished, we are, we're not just going, uh, we, we want you to live in a safer community. And these liberal judges and liberal prosecutors and liberal everything else is what's destroying this. And we want you to be safe and happy. And we need to make a difference for our voters. They would start removing these offenders they'd start removing these judges and prosecutors that don't want to enforce the law it's it's insane to me that we have to have this conversation we've got people getting away with murder in lexington because of their skin color and our legislators are like oh you know man we just need to pass another law how are you going to pass a law on that? I mean, I ask you, what are you going to do about that? We got people getting away with, you know, trying to stab people, run people over, leading police chases, not spending a day in jail. How's your safer community? Is that going to address that? You know, an officer's life can be threatened to the point where he can shoot somebody legally and that person be out on the street the next day and for the rest of their life and never spend a day inside a jail cell. How are you going to fix that? Because it ain't going to be through some press conference bill talking about wiretapping or, or, or anything else. You're going to have to do the hard thing, legislators. You're going to have to start removing judges that refuse to enforce the laws you pass. That's what you're going to have to do. You sit there and say, well, it's on the voters. Well, you know what? They have an eight-year term, and most voters aren't even allowed to access the details of these cases. How are they supposed to know what's going on? You've made it darn near impossible to hold judges accountable, and you know what? That's coming back to haunt them because we have a new ruling on a school choice bill from a judge. We'll talk about that after this short break. You're listening to the Andrew Cooperwriter Show, your source for Kentucky politics from constitutional and conservative perspective. 859 Print has local service and low prices. I personally have done tons of business with them. And I can tell you whether it is getting things printed off, sending direct mail, making business cards, buying TV ad time, digital marketing, they can do it all. And as a special for listeners of this show, they're offering 10% off any and all print services using code RIDER2024. That is code R-I-D-E-R 2024 for 10% off. Check out 859 Print. You'll be glad you did. And you are back with the Andrew Cooper writer show for the break. We we're talking about uh, worthless judges just all around the state, destroying our community and the legislators inability to impeach and remove them. And another judge that they've had the ability to impeach and remove, especially when even the Supreme court, the state Supreme court ruled that this judge has absolutely operated outside of his bounds is judge Philip Shepard, the Franklin Circuit Court judge. Now understand this, and, and, and this is just really unfortunate how our system's set up here in Kentucky. So any challenge uh, that you want to make against a law's constitutionality has to be done in the Franklin Circuit Court, the Frankfurt Courts, because of course, Frankfurt's the capital. Therefore, that judge is the first judge, and, and there's two judges, and so often it's Philip Shepard. Um, that judge is the judge who gets to make the first ruling on the constitutionality of a law. And then that goes up to the appeals court. And then that goes up then to the state Supreme court. If they decide they want to pick up the case, but that means that the initial ruling, what affects whether or not the, the judge, uh, uh, the hearing of course, too, as well, what allows the initial evidence, what, what allows the initial arguments, all that is handled through judges out of Franklin Circuit Court. And why this is such a problem is those judges are elected by Franklin County residents. 
So the first judge <clears throat> that gets to rule on laws that govern all of us in the entire state is elected by only a one county. And that makes that judge's race extremely expensive. I know Shepard's last elections, hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars, more money was spent in just Judge Shepard's election in 2022 than it was spent in all circuit <clears throat> court judges in Fayette County. Sorry, I've had the coughs today. I don't know what it is. But anyways, and then in, in, in that money spent just in Shepard's one election is more spent than all of Lexington judges because of how important those judgeships are. So they get the first opportunity to rule on something. Now, legislators have attempted to change this. They passed a law saying that, um, you know, that, that judges, uh, that the uh, hearing, the initial hearing could be chosen by a uh, basically a lottery system. So all circuit court judges would have the opportunity to hear constitutionality cases all across the state. However, the problem becomes, of course, that this is uh, arbitrary in process to a degree. And the constitutional arguments against this is that, a, you, you know, no part of justice can be arbitrary and just randomly Picking a judge in the entire state seems arbitrary. That's their argument. I don't know if it is or isn't. But regardless, the reason why this came up is because Philip Shepard has recently ruled that House Bill 9 from last session uh, is unconstitutional. And what House Bill 9 did was, one, it mandated the opening of two pilot charter schools, in, one in northern Kentucky, one in Louisville. It, it kind of moved around who can who can approve charter schools so it can be done by both like the mayor of a city or a county um, in Fayette County, like a mayor or the 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 or the school board. So you've kind of got two places uh, you can go there, and then also the um, you know of course the state government can hand down a charter school as well. And what charter schools are they're 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 different than normal private schools. So I want to explain real quick what a charter school is, okay? Um, a charter school, so a, a, a private school just opens, right? And then you can take your kid there, you can pay money there, whatever. How a charter school works is that it has a charter that is voted on and agreed to by some governmental authority, public authority, and then that public authority grants the charter of the school. The school is then funded through public dollars. It costs nothing to the students to go there, but it's just ran by an independent entity that isn't government. So government authorizes it. Government agrees to essentially a contract to how the school will be ran. Then that comes open up to, to, you know, any students in the district should have equal opportunity to join it. So a lot of times that's through a lottery draw system. So everybody has equal access and opportunity to join the charter school. And then from there, uh, this private company is in charge of educating whatever kids do end up by chance getting in. Well, Judge Shepard ruled that this was unconstitutional, and this is what he had to say. He said, the central question in this constitutional analysis is whether the privately owned and operated charter schools, which are established by this legislation, should be considered common schools or public schools within the meaning of Section 183, 184, and 186 of the Kentucky Constitution. A review of the case law and plain language of the Kentucky Constitution itself yields the inescapable conclusion that charter schools are not public schools or common in schools. That's what he has to say. Now, I think Shepard's full of it. I'm going to tell you why. You know, obviously, I'm not a constitutional attorney, uh, but I'm going to tell you why. So, first, some definitions here. Common school means a community funded instrument of education for all children of the region or neighborhood. And a public school is defined as a school supported by public. So I've kind of explained how charter schools work. They get chartered by the public. They're then funded by the public, but just ran by a private company. Let me try to give you an example of how you can kind of understand why I think he's full of it, okay? Imagine your community builds a pool with tax dollars. So like, you know, a pool, pool deck, you know, changing rooms, everything else. And so they build that pool with your money, and then they allow anyone to go to that pool for free. Um, I mean, it would be a, that would then make it a public pool, right? It was publicly funded. It's open to the public. Um, anybody can go. I mean, clearly they have a capacity, so they can't take everyone, but everybody has an equal opportunity to enjoy this free public pool. So you'd say, yeah, that's definitely a public pool. Now, 
Now let's imagine in this example, instead of the city hiring a pool manager and lifeguards, if instead they decided to hire a pool management company and then they just paid that company to run the pool, is it still a public pool built by your tax dollars? The funding and the running of the pool paid for by your tax dollars. Everyone can go to the pool. Everybody has equal opportunity to go to the pool. Is the fact that the city doesn't directly employ the lifeguards and the pool manager now make it somehow a private pool? Now, I think any reasonable person in that example would say, no, of course not. Because with that thought process, then like every single road out there would become a private road, not a public road, because it's built by private companies. Uh, 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 it's maintained by private companies, but then the taxpayer foots the bill. So the taxpayers are paying for it and it's open and free and available to anybody to drive on it. But because somehow the entity taking care of it and building it is, is private, that now makes it private. I mean, I mean, in all aspects of government, it does not work this way. There's no other part of government where the differentiation between whether a private employee or a government employee is delivering the service means it's now not public and publicly funded, publicly available, makes for public entity. But somehow when it comes to schools, this entire thought process of what does it mean to be public goes completely out the window. And this is just, just like the last topic we covered, just more judicial activism. I don't know how you with a straight face sit there and say, okay, this is authorized by public. It's paid for by the public. Um, it's available to the public, regardless of who they are. Everybody has equal opportunity to go there. But somehow it's not public because the person writing the check to the people who operate the place, well, that's a company. So now it's it's no longer public now. I mean, imagine, okay, <clears throat> you've got a park. And instead of the city mowing it themselves and, and maintaining it, picking up the trash, everything else, they hire a landscaping company to mow and pick up the trash at the park. Change out the trash. Pick up the trash, mow, take care of the place. So it was built by your tax dollars, but now it's being ran by essentially a landscaping company. Is it now a private park? Of course not. Whether or not it's public or private deals with whether or not you have access to it and then who's paying for it. If you have access to it and tax dollars are paying for it, that's all that matters. Nothing else matters. But yet they're going to cook this up. This is how it's always been. This is why we have to have a constitutional amendment in Kentucky because these activist judges like Philip Shepard are going to continue to follow their masters who gives them, where do you think those hundreds of thousands of dollars came from that Judge Philip Shepard had to run his campaign? Where do you think it comes from? It's, it's, I'll give you a hint. It's coming from places like the schools, knowing that he's the first judge to rule on it and attempting to affect his outcome and his behavior. This isn't the first time Judge Philip Shepard has made such an erroneous ruling. It won't be the last, but of course it will continue because the legislative body who can do something about it more than just wag a finger and pass some more laws that won't be enforced refuse to step up to the plate and hold these crazy judges accountable and they're destroying our state. Well, y'all, that's what we got time for today on the Andrew Cooper Show. Thank you all so, so much for joining me. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Y'all have a great rest of your day.